Now, in case you don't know, uh, this month is Black History Month. Now, before I, I introduce him, this is some interesting facts about him. So, the music industry was very anti-Black British artists. Now, this man opened up a studio uh, for Black British artists, which was free, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, which also pressed um, vinyls and created a distribution network all by themselves in Stamford Hill. Also, him and his friend, Dennis Brown, got a coach, believe it or not, a coach, from London to Scotland once a week, distributing dub plates of some of his biggest tracks. I can proudly say the godfather of DIY culture Eddie Grant is on the show, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, how are you? I'm excellent. Yeah? Yes, better than excellent. Wicked. Excellent will do. How does it feel being Eddie Grant? I've been Eddie Grant for a long time. Yeah. And uh, I've quite gotten used to it now. Yeah. Yeah, so I have no problem. Wicked. Now, does it ever get overwhelming? In fact, you've helped um, independent, like the mentality of independent black artists to just go by themselves, not be part of a label, what I did was try to establish something that hadn't been here as right. a service uh, that was that didn't exist, and uh, primarily I did it for myself first of all. Then everybody started saying, "Well, you know, bro, we don't have this and we don't have that," and so wherever it was possible, those guys got free studio time and you know whatever. And then eventually, having done that, because then that made the first black uh, um, engineer wow. in in this country in the, yeah. in, the, in the whole of Europe actually wow. and the same goes for the studio and then they started saying on the street man Eddie you know why when time comes for Christmas and them thing you know you can't get <laughs> no pressing and so I, so I said well, yeah. what do you want me to do why should I get a pressing plant you know and just make yeah. things easy for the man them and so on so I, I i bought a pressing plant that was in new cross which oh, of wow. course then became the first black pressing plant wow. in the yes yeah, so yeah. you understand what i'm saying yeah so and that uh, lasted for a while and then i realized that i was fighting the unions and all kinds of crazy things and i wasn't being able to concentrate too much on the music so i went i got rid of the pressing plant Went back to the studio, made Do You Feel My Love. All of a sudden, everything started again. And from then on to now. Yeah. And some of your biggest tracks, correct me if I'm wrong, include Electric Avenue. Correct. Would you say that is your favourite track? What would you say is your favourite track that you've made? Uh, or is after 50 years, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, what's the first, uh, what's the favourite day that you've spent with your wife? You know right. what I'm saying? Um I've had I've had quite a lot of them, and yeah. as they become successful, or, or as I realize that they are special, then I get to like them even more. Wicked. What would you say was the hardest thing about having a free studio? Because I'm sure there was more than one black artist that wanted to come to the studio. Well, you know what happened was that it's not everybody that came. It okay. it was, but just about every black artist in England passed through that uh, little establishment in Stamford Hill, one day they'll put a blue plaque on it. Yeah. You know, it, because it, it really came out of uh, something so crazy, you know, that I had to leave my band at the time, which was called Equals, yeah. uh, to realize that I'd always had the use of a studio. And I didn't want to be spending monies that I didn't have to go taking time in somebody else's studio. So I yeah. decided, you know what, the money that I've got and anything else that was about, I'd sell and I'd build this place, you yeah. know, which was another story altogether. Wow, I'm so inspired. Just like sitting down, learning so much knowledge. It's uh, <laughs> it, it's it's out there for everybody if they want it. Wicked. Um, and you can easily grab that. Now, uh, you've been making music for such a long time, over 50 years, correct from wrong. Correct. And a recent track, um, I don't know how recent this is, I'm the One. I'm the One. How recent are we talking? I'm the one was recorded uh, about five years ago. Oh, wow. Well, I've been making the album okay. for six years. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a track that is worthy of being put out as a single. Uh, I don't know exactly my daughters and them are in charge now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They tell me, yeah, you can <laughs> use this one, Dad, or you can use that <laughs> one. So I listen. Yeah. You know, I have always listened. Maybe that's why I've been around for yeah. 50 years. 
Wow. Um, I genuinely don't know what to say, but without further ado on Represent Radio, Eddie Grant, how would you feel about introducing that track, Amber One? Well, here's uh, a track from the album Plaisance, and it's called I'm the One. Wicked. Really, really enjoying this one. Eddie Grant with I'm the One on Represent Radio. Eddie Grant. Wow, sir. You I, like it? I love it. Good. It's very it's very modern as well. Well, hey. It's, it's like the fusion of like old school and new school together. Correct. And that guitar solo. <laughs> what other instruments do you play? I play anything. Yeah? Yes. Wicked. Um, and today, you are going to be turning on the lights for Electric Avenue. It's today, right? Today's the 17th. It is. It's in a couple of hours' time. Wicked. And that was the first electrical light in Brixton. Correct. So you're going to be returning it on for the that's, new decoration. That's correct. How for you a feeling? New time. How you feeling? I'm f- I'm feeling great yeah. for it. Yeah. Nervous? I'm, you know, I no no. I'm yeah. never nervous. Love that. You, you know, when you do your homework, yeah, like your mother told you. I love that. Yeah, I love that. You don't be nervous. 